So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on, let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, Wolf. It's Windows Pro time. All right, tell you there, champs. And yes, it takes 100 years to do all this testing because I've got to test on the PC and then the old Mac and the new... Oh, it's so much testing. Anyway, I was getting confused. I had no idea which Mac was which, which PC was which. Black PCs, grey Macs. So I decided to name them. On the right, we have Ash, the 2018 i9 six core processor, 32 gigs RAM and Vega 20 MacBook Pro. In the middle, we have Nora, which is the 2019 i9 32 gigs RAM, Vega 20, eight core. And then on the left here, we have the Boost, the Razer Blade with RTX 2060 Max-Q and i7-8750H, which is like the six core eighth generation CPU. I did use some arrows too with the ninth generation CPU. So we have King Tut, Cleopatra, and the weapon. Now, now I'm not even joking here. Archie Luxury, over 7,000 videos. He done it all on a Core 2 Duo with 8 gigs RAM and Windows Movie Maker on Windows Vista. I'm not even joking. That's how hardcore he is. The rest of us, we're just pretending with these MacBook Pros, XPS 15s, you know, razors and arrows and the sort. So anyway, let's get into testing these things. Let's see which one's faster, which one's better, the performance differences between them. And you might be thinking, why am I comparing six core PCs to an eight core Mac? Well, you can compare the six core PCs to the old 2018 six core MacBook Pro. And also I will be getting the eight core i9 XPS 15 within like probably in a couple of weeks. So yeah, stay tuned for that shootout. So what I'm gonna cover here is video editing, performance metrics, Photoshop, After Effects, Red, Footage, Logic Pro, Music Production, everything you wanna know. Let's start out with 8K Red Raw to H.264. And as you'll see here, when it comes to Premiere Pro, look at that eight core under one minute. We're talking 59 seconds. And if you compare that to the PCs, it's quite a lot faster. But what you can see is Premiere Pro, this is the same project, just uh, two 8K files put together with a cross dissolve and just exported it to H.264 to YouTube preset, both in Final Cut and Premiere Pro. You can see in Final Cut takes a lot longer than Premiere Pro to output 8K red raw footage to uh, H.264. I don't know why that takes so long in Final Cut, but anyway, the 8 core i9 is like around 28% faster than the PCs, and that's a general theme. If you're not using all the cores and you're using a bit of hardware encoding, you're going to get same or single figure up to you know 13 percent difference between the 219 mac and the 218 mac with the 219 having those extra two cores now if it's a cpu only test it can be over 20 percent faster so it just depends on your workflow there now this is using final cut pro 8k to prores and as you'll see the ninth generation eight core beats a six core base model imac like the new one so yeah that's pretty good and it's a fair bit faster than the last six core one and i think that's around eight percent faster or something like that so so a good little boost there in Final Cut Pro. Now here we have After Effects. Now this is a very interesting benchmark because you would think After Effects is like graphic intensive. You need a good graphics card, but actually um, After Effects prefers a faster CPU. The GPU is really only used for previews. If you look here, the Razer does have the highest score, but that's because when it does the preview benchmarks, it scores higher because it has a CUDA or NVIDIA graphics card. You cannot even turn on GPU accelerated previews with the Max because you need a CUDA graphics card. So the previews are actually generated in the Max by the CPU. So that is slower obviously than the GPU. So that's why the scores are a little bit lower considering it has eight cores. But you can see in that test, anything to do with CPU, it's smashing that razor blade. Obviously it has two extra cores and actually kills the last six core MacBook Pro. So the last generation one, it is much faster in After Effects and that's the extra two cores. And this is where it makes a difference right cpu intensive hitting that cpu boom it's going to be a lot faster now i will say if you add an extra two cores to the razor it'll be a much better system because obviously you'll get a higher score but you can also use cuda gpu acceleration so you'll see later that in premiere pro photoshop the macs actually are faster than the pcs whether they're six core or eight core but in after effects still the pc is better 
it's, it's faster. So, but the best thing to note here is the difference between the last generation MacBook Pro and the new one. Yeah, there's a big difference there. And I could see it play on through the benchmark. It was so fast. All right, Bruce X, it's not a porno. I swear to God, it's actually a benchmark. So yeah, you can see there, what is it? 10% gain to the new eight core MacBook Pro and it even beats out the iMac. So yeah, this does use GPU and CPU. So yeah, the difference isn't that big like you were seeing with the other tests, say in After Effects, because After Effects is mostly a CPU apart from the previews. Now let's have a look at Cinebench here. This is a CPU test and as you can see there, look how fast that MacBook Pro one is. That is super fast, the eight core one, like 3,186. Even got some runs over 3,200, so it is super fast. You can see the ninth generation Aero is slightly faster than eighth generation MacBook Pro, and the Razer is very slow. Now, yes, it is eighth generation versus, say, ninth generation on the Aero, but they're all six cores, if you're talking about all the ones on the right, apart from the 219 MacBook Pro. But the reason why the Razer is so slow is it's because it's locked at that 45 watts. They won't allow it to go over that, and yeah, it's a 2.8 clock and it just sits there after the boost is finished so yeah it gets the lower score hopefully razor allow a higher power limit soon when it comes to photoshop boom have a look at that friggin eight core world record mate world record 912 the first one to go over 900 and yeah it smashes the pcs yeah i don't know why it's faster than pcs the mac it's just optimization i guess and you wouldn't think so you would think you know adobe products will be better on pcs but no you will see in the premiere pro benchmarks later other than say After Effects, pretty much every Adobe product works better on a Mac. And you can clearly see here, if you want the Photoshop King, get the Mac and yeah, they are faster than the PCs, quite a bit faster. So it is what it is. I don't know what to say there. I can't explain it. So let's get into my famous Premiere Pro project, which I've tested just about every single laptop. I've upgraded to the 219 now, so pretty much all the other scores are dropping off anyway. But don't worry about that. But as you can see there, can you believe it? Premiere Pro, supposed to be for PCs, supposed to be for CUDA, but the MacBook Pro, it just owns this. And it's a lot faster. Now I will point out, both Macs have 32 gigs RAM. It is RAM sensitive, this test, because it will use over 16 gigs. From what I've seen, it's only a maximum of 20 seconds difference, 16 versus 32 gigs. Even if you added worst case scenario 20 on, it's still much faster on the Mac. And with an eGPU, it actually is faster than like a 9900K of a 2080 Ti desktop like i'm not even joking it even beats a 16 core thread ripper with a radeon 7 yeah it beats a desktop if you put an eGPU on the mac boom i don't know why that's just crazy and last but not least let's have a look at some music production here i downloaded some sample projects and yeah have a look at this i mean it's got like friggin 86 tracks and it doesn't even touch the sides like with usage or ram it's just like plows through that easily when i bounce them out the same speed with their last generation six core Mac because it is like single core process bouncing them out. But I could not kill it with like here, 86 tracks. It could do much more. And I think Ash has actually tested and he was saying like 60 tracks on the last gen i7 and the 80 tracks he was getting with the new i9, the eight core one. But that one he has has 16 gigs. It would probably do more if it had more RAM. Music production, Macs are great for music production and yeah, Logic, I couldn't kill it. So, and this is not just 86 tracks, it's got stints, it's got plugins, it's got a lot of things going on here. So I'm not competent enough to actually kill it. I heard that it's a lot better with Alchemy. I watched this channel called John Sin. It's like an Arabian sort of German DJ dude. And he's saying these new Macs just kill it with Logic. So yeah, it's gonna be great for music production. I'd like to thank you guys for watching this. Uh, it took me so long to do. I appreciate a like and comment down there. Also, why don't you download those Puget System Photoshop benchmarks and the After Effects benchmarks and tell me your scores down there in the comments. I'd like to catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho! Woo!